Okay, hi everybody, we're back and today I'd like to go over my example uh, with maps again and I kind of want to uh, clarify some points. So first of all, let's, um, let's take a look here at how this, so let's, let's take a look at how these items or specifically the keys notice I have a few more this time I've changed the name of the map to NA so name age but what I want to stress here is that in a regular map container things are actually stored the the items are actually can be iterated through I should say where the keys are sorted. So notice this, the keys in this case are going to be alphabetically sorted because the comparison operator, the less than for strings, is going to make them alphabetic. So I have, you know, like right here, I have uh, a loop that's going to iterate through the uh, on line 20 and 29. It's going to iterate through the map and print them out. Notice I've added a few more. So let's run this and I'll show you what it kind of looks like. So notice here, take a look, Adam, Bill, Bob, Kathy, Zion. Notice that these are definitely in alphabetical order. Now it's got nothing to do with the values but everything to do with the keys. Okay, so now notice that in the second iteration, which we haven't, I haven't shown you the code yet for. Notice that it's going backwards. So it's going from Z down to A. So it's, let's take a look at that code. So if we go back, so let's take a look here because we have, I'm no, notice I'm using a different uh, begin and end. I'm using reverse begin and reverse end. So the reason why this works is because the iterator in a map is bidirectional. We, we briefly touched upon that before, but we can iterate forward and backward. Notice I'm still using plus plus here, but in fact, I'm starting kind of at the end and going towards the beginning. I'm using different iterators, R begin and R end, as I did before. Here, I'm just using begin and end on line 28. So let's take a look at the documentation. Okay, so here's the map documentation. And if we scroll down, okay, <coughs> um, to iterators, notice we have R begin reverse iterator and R end. Okay, so that's, that's how I've used those there in that example. And so that's what's going on there is I'm, I'm getting, I'm iterating over it backwards. Now that's not the only way to iterate, um, but it's one of them. However, uh, what I wanted to point out here is that we can't do this if it was an unordered map. So. If we, if we take a look at the documentation for an unordered map, so if we go up here and um, let's actually go to unordered map. So with an unordered map, the, um, the iterators here, we just have begin and end. There is no reverse. So if we go back to the code, Okay, and let's say, for example, we change this. In, you know, we're including both here, or, right? But right here is where I'm creating the type, or the, I'm instantiating it, so or declaring it. So let me comment that out and turn NA into an unordered map. And let's now see if we can compile it. And notice it's not going to work because um, notice here, there's no such thing as R end and R begin. So we, we, can't, we can't do that. Obviously, 
if it's unordered, uh, also, the other thing about an unordered map is, so let's just leave it as unordered there. You're going to notice something, however. Let's take out the reverse. Where's my reverse? Here. So let's take this part out. And let's see what it looks like when we run this. OK, oh, hold on a sec. OK, my problem was that uh, I was creating an iterator here, but I was creating it as a map iterator, not an unordered map iterator, even though I changed, I declared the, a different data type at the top. So changed it, and now we're OK. It runs. But my point being now is that notice nothing is alphabetical anymore. OK, so there's no order to this. And even I'm adding Sarah to this one. Notice uh, Zion, Adam, Bill, Kathy, Bob. Sarah gets added as the first one, uh, even though it's S. So, so there's no rhyme or reason to the order in an unordered map as would be expected. Whereas in the regular map, we had our keys sorted by default. Which, which, which meant it was alphabetical. Now, recognize that no matter, like for example, if our keys were integers, they would be sold, so, uh, sorted based on integer sorting. So, but the unordered map, even though it doesn't have any order uh, to the keys, it does have the benefit of being faster than the regular map. So I kind of wanted to show that clearly and what the difference was. OK, the other point that I wanted to make was that using the auto key keyword for range-based looping, which you iterate, instead of iterating over it using an iterator or, uh, you know, like let's say for example, if it was a vector, iterate over the indices of the vector, you can iterate directly over the items in the container, in this case, the, the key value pairs. However, um, we can do this three different ways. The, the regular way that I've been doing this is just using you know, a variable like x. Now understand that this will actually make a copy when we're iterating over the items. So if we happen to change anything, uh, it's not going to take effect. OK? Um, however, if we use by reference, then we will. And const by reference means that we're not going to be making a copy, copy and uh, we're not going to be able to modify it. So notice, um, I'm using, I'm using a copy here for the range-based loop. So essentially, I'm, I'm making a copy of everything in NA, the, the map. And so every time I iterate through it, I make a copy of each item, and, and it gets assigned to x. So now if I modify x, so if I say, OK, if, if x dot first equals Sarah, make x dot second equal to 22. Um, obviously, now let's just try this. And if I, if I run this, Notice here, Sarah is still 11. So that doesn't work. But if I change this, put an ampersand in front of the x here, and say copy uh, by reference, then you can see here if I run this again now, it does in fact change it to 22. However, I want to specify something, and that is, um, Obviously, I'm trying to change this through x. Let's change it back to copy by value. And then instead of actually changing um, x, let's change the underlying uh, data container, which is na. And let's say na Sarah. And now that's equal to 22. OK, so even now I'm not copying by reference. And let's see it this time. 
Okay. So notice now it's still it's still modifying it. But do you understand the difference here is I'm modifying the original container. I'm, st I'm getting 22, so it is working. But before, I was modifying x dot second, and that didn't have any effect because x is copy by value. OK, so the last point in, the, um, in this map example that I wanted to go over with you is the, is the finding an item in it. So the, in our last lesson, we showed this example here we, we said if um, you find the key in the map and it's if you if you call dot find and it's not equal to the end iterator then we found it the issue with this though is then how can you access or well, you can access the the value notice that's exactly what I'm doing here right so I'm, I'm accessing the value by by doing a lookup, okay? But number one, why should I have to do a lookup if I've already found it here? So I'm kind of doing something twice. And also, notice I've hard-coded the, um, the key. I, I don't really like this very much. So I think there's got to be a better way of doing this. And so I do have an example here. I said alternate find. Let's store where we find it. So here, let's make an iterator, p, and just disregard this because right now we're using an unordered map. And here what I say is, so this if statement is kind of like a dual purpose if statement. It has an assignment in it and a comparison. So first, let's assign the iterator p to na.find, so find Sarah in the map and assign to, so p is now an iterator. If that iterator is not equal to the end, then we found it. But you see now, once we found it, we can now call, and notice the arrow notation here, on first, p first, and p second. Unlike before, where we hard-coded the key, right, and we had to do another lookup of the key. Here, this is, I think, better code, because since we now know where the iterator is of what we're looking for, we can just call first and second, and we're done. However, I, I can make one more suggestion to make this code more readable. And that is, notice here, we have to actually declare an iterator. And then we have to use this double assignment and comparison if. It becomes much easier to read if we use this second alternate with the easier syntax here. Basically here I'm using auto for, and I'm using a different variable name for the iterator. Instead of p I'm using q. So I'm going to say na.find Sarah, all right, and now automatically it knows it's going to be an iterator. And now I can say if q is not equal to na.end. Notice that I've kind of taken care of two different issues. One, I'm actually calling the find outside of the if, which is which is nice, right? It's cl I think it's cleaner, and also um, the if statement looks a lot more readable in this situation, I think. Okay, so I mean, if I had to code this, I would definitely use uh, this last example, and of course, we still get the benefit of being able to use uh, arrow first and second for the key and the value. Okay, so last lesson, I kind of touched upon this, but today I wanted to go over this uh, again to make this clear that here, you notice I'm making uh, four different types of maps. Notice the keys are all integers, but the values are different, bool, char, string, and an int. However, here I'm I'm printing keys. I'm, I'm I'm doing lookups of keys that don't exist because I haven't put anything in these in these uh, maps, and yet I, I I'm doing this because I wanted to show that when you access elements that don't exist, 
you end up actually doing an insertion or an addition to the, to the map. And this is kind of odd behavior compared to Python specifically. But I also wanted to uh, expose or you know show what are the values that get put in. What are the default values that get put in? So specifically, let's talk about the bool here. First, notice the bool. The default value, so if I run this program, I've already put the output here as comments uh, at the ends of the line, but let's just run it anyways and see what happens. So notice my bool default value is 0. My char default value is 0. And I had to do a little bit of hocus pocus to get that to show up. And string is, well, seems like it's nothing. And int is 0, which is, I think, uh, intuitive. The other ones are intuitive too, but let's just discuss them for a minute. Uh, for a bool, 0 is actually false. Okay, so remember anything other than zero is true. So therefore, the default uh, value for a bool in a map is false. Next, notice here I'm casting this to an int because if I if I don't, uh, we can't actually see it because it's actually the null character. Now you might be wondering, uh, how do I know that? Well, let me show you. So if I go into the um, man ASCII and take a look at the ASCII table, notice that decimal zero, right, which is what we're getting, is actually the null character. So, so when we, if we try and print it, we're not going to see anything. So in the code here, if I simply, if I don't cast it and I try, um, you know, we're, nothing's going to show up because we're not going to end up seeing the null character. That's why I'm casting it to uh, an int and then we actually get to see the ASCII decimal value of zero and that is the, the null character. The string on the other hand is the empty string, right? Empty string is, uh, that's defined as that, okay? And don't use single quotes. Sometimes you forget and in Python, it doesn't make a difference, but C++, it does. Strings have to be double quoted. And obviously, the default, the default value for the integer is 0. So just to let you know, if you do a lookup and it doesn't exist, and you're using um, square brackets, you'll end up adding to the map. Now, once again, you could, you could OK, um, I, let me copy this line and paste it. And if you did this, right, um, and, and now in this case, right, this is, this is now going to, let me, let me just <coughs> modify this here. If I did dot at here, and I used dot at requires round braces, this is still going to work, right, because, because of this line, right? But if we change the, the key, and if I, go like that. So let's let's just sh first show that this is going to work. So if I run that, okay, it, it works, right? And why does it work? Because we it got created on this line. So the line before it got created. But now if I go and change this, let's say, to a 2, now that's going to uh, that's going to fail. And it does. Okay, so our program terminates, but at least we get a runtime error. Okay, so that's the end of um, my second lesson on maps.